I'm feeling very fancy today. Very, very Diana Ross, circa 1979. Mm -hmm. yes. Problem is, the only fancy I have is in yardage form right now. Today, I'm going to transform these sequins and a little bit of faux fur into a shrug that's going to bling me up for the holidays super quick. You can make this in a couple hours, y'all. Let's go. You guys remember last week when uh, I was helping you add a filter pocket to make a garment for your face and I lamented that I wanted to make a garment for my body well this week that's what we're gonna do and i swear to you it is as easy as the mask and plus you get to be fancy and come on that's just as important as being safe today i want to pair these sequins with this uber soft faux fur into a shrug. You guys, it's just a rectangle stitched together and closed up at the ends with a few beautiful hand stitches. You can totally do this. Faux fur and sequins are actually pretty finicky fabrics that require a lot of um, special care, but uh, not today. Today we don't have time for that. Today they just need to get on our bodies. And I can give you some tips and tricks on uh, working with that fancy kind of fabric later. What are you doing? Was it obvious what he was doing? I'm, I'm talking to the Technicolor troop here, please. We'll close the door, please. Thank you. Thank you. Back to what I was saying. Let's talk about our two main fabrics for a minute. For sequins, you don't want these sequins damaging your fabric scissors. Now when I'm cutting sequins, I don't use my good fabric scissors. I use my not so good fabric scissors, which are pretty much my good fabric scissors retired to a, a slightly demoted pair. When one of my blades starts to get dull, it gets demoted, gets a little sparkly piece of washi tape thrown on it and then I know that this pair is for cutting sequins, cutting rigoline plastic boning, for cutting the ends of zippers. They don't go away, they just go towards a different purpose. So I use my slightly demoted pair for cutting sequins. When cutting into faux fur, you want to try not to cut into the fur. You can accomplish this by carefully snipping just into the backing or you can use an X-Acto knife just to cut along the backing only, letting the fur pile stay nice and juicy. Now let's talk about our measurements. My sequin fabric is 48 inches wide, so that is what is gonna dictate for me the width of my shrug, the length of my shrug. I'm going with about a 26. So my digits for this are 48 by 26. This is not rocket science. This is two rectangles. So if you're a few inches more than me or a few inches less, it's really not gonna make that much of a difference. Working with sequins can get very messy. Uh, me, I like a little mess. Cleaning up messes is therapeutic. <sighs> nice mess. He loves it when I make a mess. Now we've got our faux fur. Mm, she's so pretty. We're gonna flip her around. So the wrong side is facing up. And I'm gonna take my sequin rectangle that I just cut out and I'm gonna lay that on top. I'm just going to cut my rectangle out based on my sequin rectangle here. And that way I'm sure everything matches up. 
I'm just aligning the straight edge, the selvage of the sequins, to the selvage of the faux fur. And now, let's throw some pattern weights on top of that. This pile, it's not too long, it's not too lofty, so I'm not really losing that much by just going ahead and cutting through it. And again, I want it on my body, like now, so let's cut. <laughs> I know I said sequins can get messy. Working with fur can get even messier. <laughs> nice wood. Have fun playing with your wood, babe! Always do! <laughs> We've got our rectangles cut out. I'm now going to sandwich these babies together, right sides together. So here's our faux fur with the right side up. And here are our sequins and the right sides are going to face down. This is called RST for y'all who are learning sewing terms, right sides together. Now I'm going to pin all along these edges so that we can stitch it up. I'm going to leave an opening right here at the bottom of about mm, 8 inches just so that I can pull the fabric through at the end. So right here at the bottom I'm going to give myself two crosses of pins and that's going to remind me to stop and start sewing at those crosses. There and there, we're leaving this section open. We're ready to start our stitching at the cross mark. Stitch, 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 and stop at this cross mark, leaving this section open. I'm gonna do this at about a half inch seam allowance because that is how wide my selvage edge over here is on the sequiny fabric. So that's gonna dictate how big my seam allowance is. Now normally when you're sewing up sequins, you want to remove every little sequin from the seam allowance. But again, I want this on my bod in time for holiday Zoom meetups. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is use a heavier needle in my machine. If your sequins are thicker, or if you have like rhinestones or bling in there, do not do what I'm about to do. You gotta remove all that bling from the seam allowance before you stitch it up. But these sequins, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty easy to cut through with my uh, demoted fabric scissors. So if your sequins are easy to cut through, they're probably gonna be fine to stitch through them. Just make sure you're using a thicker needle. Also, make sure that you are using protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you're stitching through those sequins, you don't want one of them flying up into your face, into your eye. Because even if they're flimsy, you don't want something like that hitting your eye. Always use protection, especially if they're as fabulous as these. Okay, let's get sewing.
we're done machine stitching. And no, I wasn't lying. I wear these when I'm sewing through sequins. Now we're gonna take our rectangle and we're going to pull it through that hole we left for ourselves at one side. You see? We're just gonna pull all of that through. Mmm, the lovely afternoon sunshine coming through. So you can see that dappled beauty. Huh? How about it? On this one side, you've got your sequins, and on the other side, You've got your faux fur. And uh, we're gonna do a little hand stitching now and finish this um, this beauty up so we can get it on ourselves and see what Rob has done with his decorating talents. Let's go flat so you can see this. Okay, we're ready to sew this open section in our rectangle shut. We're gonna fold under the seam allowance of the open section. This is actually pretty easy. The fabric wants to be folded under like the rest of the machine stitched seam. So just pinch a half inch under on both the fur and the sequins and pin it closed. Now we're ready to hand sew this section closed. Please ignore my mangled hands. I'm using a very simple whip stitch. Just go through one side and pull it through the other. Let the thread lay to the back side again. Push it through the back side and then pull it through the front. That's a whip stitch. Now she's all stitched up and almost done. Well, I mean, if you wanted, you could stop there. You've got a fabulous um, fur-lined sequin wrap, but we're gonna do a little more sewing. Just a little more, y'all. All right, lay your wrap flat with the fur side up and fold it in half lengthwise. We're going to whip stitch the two long ends closed about six to eight inches on either side leaving the middle open this will create sleeve openings now when i'm pinning these edges shut i'm trying to get the fur on the inside and the sequins on the outside this is going to make it nice and soft for our arms Now we whip stitch those two ends closed, just like we did on our opening. Ooh. Let's take a look-see at our handiwork. You see? No scratchy sequins on the inside. Mm-hmm. Now you're just gonna repeat that whip stitching for the other side. And here we have our finished shrug. The opening in the center is the body, and our two stitched edges are our armholes. And if you zhuzh it a little, and you let that fur fold to the outside, you get a fur-lined collar. All soft on the inside and blingy on the outside. Let me get gussied up and meet Rob by the Zoom setup.